Episode 3, Mushroom Risotto. You've seen chefs on YouTube that will show you how to make a mushroom risotto. It looks beautiful, you go through the steps, you can use the pressure cooker, you can use a traditional method, but there's one problem with it. And that is, it's assuming that you're gonna eat it right away. Now, what if you have a dinner party and you're just trying to make things ahead of time? If you make risotto while your guests are sitting down, you're not gonna be hanging out with them. You're not gonna be interacting with them or everybody's gonna be in the kitchen as you're slaving away and have eight other things together to get ready for dinner. There's a better way. And it's how chefs do it in restaurants. In restaurants, you don't make the risotto at the moment that the customer orders it. You make the risotto way hours before and then you finish it as the customer orders it. It's all in the planning. Let me show you. The difference in this rice is this is not arbori. This is not carnaloni. This is bomba or Valencia rice. This is a lot more forgiving. It's smaller than both of them and it has a higher starch content, which means it's not gonna fall apart when you cook it. And if you cook it a little bit longer, it's still gonna retain its shape and its toothsomeness. It's cheaper too, honestly. And that really helps because when you're making risotto for a lot of people, or you're making risotto in volume, you wanna be able to afford giving something good at a good price. So it works, it really does. And we got a rolling boil. Once the water starts boiling, I'm setting my timer. And I don't know if you guys can see it there, and hopefully I don't melt the phone. Rice in, and you stir. And you don't stop stirring for eight minutes. That is the key to one pound of rice being part cooked. Eight minutes in a rolling boil of water with a little bit of salt, and you don't stop stirring. It's gonna start bubbling up. It's gonna start splattering a little bit. You, if it falls on your hand, it's gonna feel like lava. That's still okay. You don't need to go crazy. Just do not stop stirring here. It's only eight minutes. It's not 20 that you would need to do for the traditional method. So it still works. It gives you the chance to actually hang out with your guests and be able to say, oh, wow, where, where have you been all your life? And yada, yada, yada. This is just a cheat that restaurants do to develop quality product for a lot of people very fast and it's fresh. If you have risotto, from the day before, that was finished the day before, it's never gonna taste the same. It's never gonna look the same. It's gonna be congealed, and it's, the sauce is gonna break. It doesn't work. This is the only thing that has been able to work at a high level to make very, a very good risotto, a very good product. And this works for any risotto. So later on, and I'm showing you a mushroom risotto because we have the ingredients, it's gonna be wonderful. And I'm gonna show you Cremini mushrooms being roasted. No, sorry, not cremini. Shiitake mushrooms being roasted. Portobello is in there. A little bit of garlic, a little bit of bacon. It'll work. You know, thank you guys for sticking with me with this. We're still figuring out the lighting with the channel. We're still figuring out a lot of other stuff. But every video, I think, is getting a little bit better. And from a personal note, cooking on camera and cooking off camera are two completely different things. You, it's like learning how to cook all over again. So kudos to anybody that cooks on camera, all of these creators, they are absolutely awesome in doing that. So eight minutes, stop the timer, pull that off the heat. Now, if you notice, See how thick that water is? So, what we're really doing is, in this, <clears throat> in a pan, take it out, 
spread it out. Take as much as you can out of it. We're going to put this in the fridge until we need it, but strainer helps. And if you like this content, you know, and if this video brings you entertainment, please like and subscribe. It really does help the channel and does help us doing more of this and better. Now, we have most of the rice out, but I'm going to save the water. If you notice something, <clears throat> I added two of these to the pot. We only pulled out one. The rest is in the rice. So we have our rice and we have our starch water. And we're going to save both until we're ready. I have bacon here. In the pan, a little bit of olive oil. And because I can bend this and move it, it is such a game changer. I want all that fat to render and I want the bacon to start browning before we add the mushrooms and later on the garlic. It's just gonna be a pan roasting where everything happens in the pan I'm not putting it in the oven or anything else. Now I have here four cups of mushrooms. Just a little bit. And some salt. And you want kosher salt. Always kosher salt. A little bit of black pepper. So this is dry roasting. Why is it called dry roasting? Because what you're actually doing is the mushrooms have absorbed all the extra oil, but there's still a little bit of oil in the pan and on the bacon. And it's not frying because that would require a lot higher oil to be in the pan. But the, slow, the low heat, the... The consistent heat is going to caramelize the mushrooms. They're going to start releasing their liquids. That's going to deglaze a little bit of the pan. Let me show you what I mean. Right here, you see this little bit of liquid? Maybe you can't, but that little itty bitty thing, those are the juices from the mushrooms coming out and evaporating. So the mushrooms first absorb liquid and then they release it and they start homogenizing. Because here's what you want. You want different textures together. 
mushroom, two kinds of mushrooms will give me two different textures. There's a meatiness aspect to mushrooms, especially shiitake when they're dry roast, when they're roasted like that. Then there's the crunch of the bacon, which will have its varying degrees of crunch to chewiness, which we want. And finally, when you build this dish, you're gonna have the crunch of the bacon, the meatiness of the mushrooms, which gives you a toothsome resistance, and then you're gonna have the creaminess of the risotto. No bite is gonna be the same. You're not gonna have the same bite twice. And that's what you kind of want in, the, in dishes like this. You want something that you can delve into and every time that you experience it, it's from a new angle, a new combination, and it's all new. So there's a lot in there for you to really enjoy and not get bored of. Get back in here. Remember how when we first started, the pan was just full like a little mountain of mushrooms? See how much it reduced down? That's just the liquid evaporating and the flavors concentrating. Well, if you notice here, this is our risotto. Notice how it's not going away. It, it stands up. In a pan, a little bit of that same bacon grease, the bacon oil. Here you go, the onions and garlic. Then we add the rice. That's enough. We can save some more for later. And this is the tostatura. Now, if I were doing a wooden spoon here, I would be crushing the rice. You don't want to crush it. You don't want to make congee. You don't want to make a rice paste. You want risotto. So you're cutting. And using the pen, moving back and forth to do that. Mm. If you stop stirring it, this happens. We can rescue it, but that happens. Now we're gonna deglaze it. White wine, red wine, whatever you pick. I'm going red. That's about cut. I added Pinot Noir, it's what I have. You can add, you can go white, you can go red. But given all the flavor that we have from the meatiness of the mushrooms and everything, the red one will look nice. Once the alcohol is cooked out, It's still a little too soon, so we have about five more minutes here. Let the bowl start getting bigger. Mm. 
you want to ladle in some stock. And I have here turkey stock that we made a few days ago. And I'll show you, I'll put a link in the video so that you can see it. And now we're finishing almost in the, tra in the traditional way, but everything is cooked off. Now, right now it's still very sharp. It still tastes very strongly of the red wine and the acid is still there, which is good. Because the last stage in risotto, it's called manticare. Two or three tablespoons of butter. I'm using unsalted because I've added salt already, but and it's what I have, but you can use the other. Take it off the heat. bit of the starch water. This finishes it. And that creates that unctuous shine. Yeah. To finish adding that creaminess. Metric ton of Parmigiano Reggiano. The good stuff. If you can get it from Italy, the better. Has all those little salt crystals. They're awesome. As much as you want of that. Okay. Let's play. There's never enough to this. Yeah, uh, get a big bite of that thing. So there you go, mushroom risotto.